Hello. So, a new update in my content. I learned how to use timestamps, so from now on, feel free to just look on your progress bar and you will see where you are. And you can choose which sections of the video you're kind of more interested in. And now I will try to put in some technical data. So this far, I kind of avoided from it. I wasn't, I would say, confident enough. But now I feel, well, I do have some experience and now I'm learning more as I go as well. So yeah, so from now on there will be a, a new section in my videos called Technical Breakdown to explain what I'm doing, why I choose to that specific part or operation. And uh, if you're not interested in the technical details, then you just skip that part. It will be very nicely marked and just, yeah, just have a look down below and uh, you will see where the timestamps are. So yeah, let's start the next video. Right, so today's project is a, I want to fit Vitron Smart Shunt. So there it is. So yeah, this is the Vitron Smart Shunt. I had it for some time already. Didn't just have, I'll say, a window of opportunity to fit it. And um, so yeah. So what is the Smart Shunt? The Smart Shunt is an all-in-one battery monitoring system and the thing what makes it smart is the fact it's Bluetooth so you can connect to any device so that would be a tablet phone PC whatever you have a Bluetooth connection you can add to it and then obviously you have the Vitron app what will read all the outputs um, and you might ask why I want one of these items because well at the moment I can read only the current loads and what happens at any any given moment there is no historical data and also what i noticed with the gkb or jkbms is whatever one of the cells reaches minimum maximum it just says battery charge or discharge regardless what actual charge is left in a battery since my batteries are not well balanced to the setbacks of the battery bank um so it not really represents what actual power i have left or power what i have stored and um uh, yeah, so I thought I need to improve on that, and uh, Vitron Smart Shunt gives a beautiful solution for this problem. So, um, what you need to know before you're installing one of these things is um, there's there's definitely coming uh, instructions with one of these units. So I'm holding in my hand, and that's how it looks. The instructions. So whatever your setting is, um, yeah and just follow these instructions and you should be fine. I also will put a, um, a wiring diagram, let's say somewhere here, just for reference. And then if we look at the device, it's actually quite self-descriptive. Uh, you have battery minus, system minus, and then a vat uh, V battery plus is the one where you connect to your battery positive connection. So yeah, and that would be the technical breakdown for this episode and now um, enjoy watching work how I take everything apart from here let's get into the battery enjoy the time-lapse Right, so the shunt is fitted now. Um, what I need to do next is a um, disable the battery. 
and um, yeah, do the wiring. Right, as you just saw, I finished the install, and uh, now it's time to set it up. And um, I haven't done it. This is basically as as easy or hard it gets. So I don't know what to do next. So I will figure out as I go, and that's a good experience for you guys to see how easy or hard it can be to just sort of like you know buy the shunt, install it, and then set it up. And that should switch on the shunt as well. I would believe so. So now we have plus and minus. Right. Okay. Let's try to download the app. Oh, it should be in a Google store. I would be very surprised if it's not there. Play Store. Victron. Uh, Victron. Smart. Shunt up, there we go. Install. And we shall see. Oh, I see already, I made a mistake. Right, um, I thought well, it should power up, but it didn't. The reason why it didn't because I put um, the plus cable. So basically, I put this wire in the wrong slot. 50 <laughs> 50 chance, and I made it wrong. Hey. Anyway, so that's easy to pick. All right, there we go. So let's go back quickly in app and disable all battery features. And that will make it safe for me to disconnect the, the plus wire. And connect it to the right terminal. Control and charge discharge. So now it should come on. I would expect. Right. Well, we'll see. We'll try to come to. Oh yeah, there you go. So we'll have a light, and it's already tried to connect to Bluetooth. So there you go. So open. Open. And uh, okay. Let's go next. Next. Next device list, okay. Next, next, okay. Hello, 
There we go, we have smart shunt and now it's connecting. Um okay, we have parent request. Okay, let's go. D flood password. Oh pin D flood six zeros I put four in. Okay, now my band. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I hope I can count to six. Alright. Simple interface. Don't leave the app while update in a progress. Stay close to the device. Update your monitor needs to complete. Yeah, okay. First time experience as it is. And my devices. Okay, connecting. Right, there we go. We are connected. Right, okay. Uh, I will pin, change the pin later. Uh, not now. Uh, what is here? Right, battery settings. Remember Bluetooth each and reload and product to see the most relevant values immediately in the device list. Uh, okay. Right, so. Update. Huh? I just updated. Setting disabled, update the latest firmware version required to modify and load settings. Okay, well, if you want to be updated, let's go. Let's go! I guess by the time. So these devices are sitting in the warehouse and now pretty much then they release better version of software and that's the main reason why I'm actually choosing Vitron I mean Vitron is expensive it's just no hands down it's, it's probably the, the most expensive part what I've done in my in my build but why I like it because of the software I mean the interface is user friendly at least for me it's easy to understand and uh, yeah so um, there are many companies who do this but I don't really like like very basic primitive interfaces where you have like two or three buttons and then you have to press through I like the fact I can log in everything is human readable language and yeah just you don't do whatever you want and that's why I'm willing to pay a little bit extra not a little bit quite a lot of extra <laughs> right so state of charge right not now history of course you won't have any history right and then state of charge, power, consumption, trends. Okay, so history and trends. So that's okay. That's exactly what I want to see. Set battery capacity. I reckon. Let's go 300 amps. Okay. And then. Go back. Go back. And save. And okay, so that's how it works. State of, state of charge. Well, you're not really 100% until that much. Voltage, output, history. Uh, where I can. None. Okay. Okay, so you ha I had to do that. Right, battery, capacity, battery, voltage, charged voltage. Right, so let's go quickly to this. I will need a calculator for that. Uh, calculator. So my state of charge would be four. Oh, sorry. 3.45 times 16 is 55.2. Oh, okay. Right, so it's not gonna stay in the background. Oh, that's good to know. Right. No settings, battery. 55.2. Huh, no. I said 55. 55.2.
discharge floor. Why, those are settings I don't even know what they're for, but hey, at least one I did you know. I will make a separate video about the settings and some data already generated, so now I don't really know what I'm even looking at. Um, so yeah, I need some time to figure it out this off screen. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and uh, yeah, see you next time.